Okay, Surecom V S W R and power meter. It doesn't. Oh, model S W one O two. All right, Surecom S W one O two. Let's do that over from the beginning. Surecom S W one O two. Gam three gear Surecom S dot 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 R with ground plate, and it's it's new. Uh, just in case you didn't know. Let's open this thing up. This is my first time opening this thing up. Oh, it's colorful and pretty. It's got a USB wall warp adapter. I'll put that with the other collection of the other 200. This is micro USB. So previous generation cell phone style, not current generation cell phone style. Let's pull that out. Let's pull that out. There it is. There is a ground plate. Nice. And some instructions. All right, let's pull this thing off. Well, that was disappointing. I was all ready for some excitement. That was disappointing. Okay, we'll get rid of that. All right, so this goes to the transmitter. This goes to the antenna. That goes to the power port. That is a grounding lug. I guess they want you to put the... Is that what they want you to do? Oh, wow. It does fit. That's interesting. I mean, I know what they're trying to do, but that's interesting. That's what that's for. And of course, I'm not reading the instructions yet. I mean, what kind of self-respecting hand would I be if I open up the instruction manual first? But I do see an opportunity here. Hang on. Is this going to be any better than the last time? Oh, yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. Interesting. Because they put it on that side but not on that side. Morning sharp edges, watch your fingers. All right, folks, you heard it here first. So if you put this ground plate on, you can no longer charge it because it covers the charging port. Excellent. Okay, I thought maybe I'd show you the antenna I was gonna play with today for this experiment with the Surecom. Uh, what we have is the PL259 to SMA adapter that enables me to get this into my antenna analyzers. And what else we have is a little piece of coax. You can get these little bits of coax um, already pre-made with the SMA connectors on one end and whatever other connector you want on another end. And what I wound up doing um, was getting this piece of coax that was PL259 on one end and SMA on the other end and then you cut it in half and now you have a useful bit of coax line with a pre-made end on it for another antenna project and I used that for a tape measure Yagi. We'll do a little dive on that one in the future at some time, I'm sure, but uh, KB9VBR has a fantastic video on tape measure Yagi. So back to this one here. Um, this is a really simple J-Pole. This is some twin lead that is probably what you would use for an old TV antenna. Um, and so what we're really trying to do is repurpose this. And so just for physical strength, I've left both pieces of the twin lead intact all the way up, but only one of these is actually connected to anything and a radiating element because of the J-pole match. So you cut this little bit of lead out here and let's take a look on our measuring mat, see if I can get that into play. And that is going to be 14 inches up from your coax connection. And then you strip a little bit off down here and you strip a little bit off down here and that is approximately one inch to get you to your J-pole section. And then the other half of it just goes all the way up to the end and the length of this is very depending on where you want to go with your frequency use. Let me get a tape measure real quick and I will measure that out for you. Trusty Performax junk tape measure that you find in the junk bin at the local store. Let's get the measurement on that. And my camera viewing angle is not however long this thing is. Ugh. I'm running out of arm length here. So total length is 58 and a half. 
inches. So that's the total length of the antenna that we're going to be testing out today. I've used this quite a bit on uh, the local 2 meter repeater and it also does do some work for us on um, 70 centimeters as well. So 58 and a half inches for the total length of the radiating element and then you have the little part that makes it into a J where it loops over at the bottom, connects to the braid on the coax and then runs up for, what did we say that was? Um, a little over 15 inches. So that's a quick look at the antenna that we will be using to analyze the Surecom today. So what I have here is the far end, the far end, I guess this would actually technically be the near end. I have the near end of a roll-up J-pole that I built, so we'll put that onto the antenna side of things. And I have your favorite radio and mine, I'm banging the crap out of my desk taking the signal stick off, the Balfang. Let me get the appropriate adapter real quick, hang on. You can be too organized. I actually put this away and did not remember where I put it away. So in case you don't have one of these things, I mean, what kind of ham are you if you don't have one of these things? This is what you need when you become a ham. You need to sink all of your money into adapters for different types of antennas. And the one that I need is this one. All right, let's see. And I'm very, very, very specifically trying my best not to read the instructions on this first. Let's see if we can make it all the way through. Well, first off, that's the wrong gender. So I gotta go back to my kit full of wonderful kit goodness and see what I can do to make that happen. I don't think I have that kind. All right, shopping list. Who's got a shopping list for me? Oh, this is gonna be quite particularly ugly, I think. I mean, we can get this thing done. All right, plug that into there. And now I've got a chain of adapters to get me into the meter. But if I was just running a regular mobile rig, I would be able to plug it in with just a short piece of coax. But this is not a mobile rig. This is the world's best handy talkie. All right, so we have radio. Let me unwind that again. Really? This little piece of coax here has a nice memory to it. All right, we have radio. We have a huge chunky mess of adapters. We have the Shorecom SW102, and we have, off in the distance over there, a uh, roll-up J-pole that I made at a club meeting a couple of years ago. It served me well, let's see if it will still serve me well. All right, so let's turn this on first. Really? You have to hold the button down for five seconds in order to get it to come on. I guess that's okay because I don't want it to accidentally come on in my go bag. Okay, so at the top here we have battery charge indicator which is full. We have a timer that tells us how long this thing has been on. I guess so that you uh, don't overheat your dummy load or something like that. It is SW102 version 2.06. Currently I'm putting out 0, 0.00 watts which is true because the radio is off. Power off, menu, clear, R. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna do is turn the radio on. Oh, that's loud. Okay, I'm gonna go up to that's not the right button. I'm gonna go up to the local repeater. This repeater is probably 15 miles away. I guess the distance doesn't really matter. We're checking power output. So let's see if it comes back. This repeater doesn't get a lot of traffic, so I like to open up the squelch first because otherwise I'll start talking and it'll clobber me. So now we do testing, testing, testing. This is Kilo Mike 9 Golf, testing, 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 and the SWR comes back as 1.88 on this antenna. Okay, and 1.15 watts. Let's go into the menu and see what our output power is. Turn 
transmit power high, 1.15 watts. That is fantastic. Okay, and it said 147.795, and I do believe that is correct on the output frequency of that repeater. Let's switch to a different repeater. And this repeater, if I can find it, there it is. This repeater is a mile and a half away. And let's see what this one here has to say. This is Kilo Mike 9 Golf. Testing, testing, testing. It's telling me my SWR is 2.08 and I'm putting out 2.8 watts at 449000. Kilo Mike 9 Golf. All right, that seems to work out pretty well. Let's see what else we can do. As a final comparison point, let's get the J-Pole antenna hooked up to the MFJ analyzer directly and see what its numbers are. All right, and this is two meter only. And I guess I need to go to 147.795 to make this an accurate comparison. And this dial is so touchy. 147.795. Come on, 147.785, close as I can get it. We are at 2.4 to one and uh, 147.8. So those are the numbers that we would compare over to the Shorecom. So there you go, one more point of comparison. All right, the Shorecom SW102. This is obviously an antenna analyzer of some kind um, but what do we do with the data that we gathered? Uh, I like the power meter output. That power meter output seemed like it was pretty reliable. Uh, I don't know how to interpret the SWR on the dummy load. Um, so further testing is necessary. I did put the MFJ antenna analyzer out onto the same antenna, the J-Pole antenna that we tested through the Shorecom, and I left the results in the video. Um, so you tell me what you think. Is this a tool that you would want to get yourself? Would you rather have the MFJ meter? Would you rather have the uh, rig expert? Would you rather have a nano VNA? What are your thoughts? I'm looking forward to hearing back from you. So you tell me what your way is and join over on Toads or leave a comment down below and let's talk about it some more. I want to know what your thoughts are on this SW102. So as always, Thanks for being awesome, and we'll see you in the next one.